Hi, so today I wanted to talk about the three most common questions I get asked when performing a consultation here at CrossFit. So, question number one is, am I fit enough to do CrossFit? This comes from people that have been watching maybe the CrossFit on YouTube or some of the Netflix documentaries, The Fittest on Earth, those sort of things, and they've seen the CrossFit Games, and they've seen people doing muscle-ups, seen people climbing ropes, seen people doing obstacle courses, um, all kinds of shenanigans in the CrossFit Games, and they wonder whether they, you know, they could actually join. If they can't do any of that stuff, they can't even, they've never even touched a barber before, how can they be expected to do CrossFit? First point to clarify is that the CrossFit Games, CrossFit as a sport, is not the same as what happens in a CrossFit box like ourselves here. So the sport of CrossFit is the fittest of the fit, competing to find out who is the fittest on earth. Uh, as a result, the tests are extremely difficult with extremely complex work in there, um, incredibly taxing. And that's the equivalent of, I suppose, comparing, um, I don't know, what Mo Farah does to starting jogging. And if you look at what Mo Farah does, you say, I'm never going to you know, run a marathon in two hours. So no, what's the point? It's not the same. It's, it's two different things. One is the top level of the sport. Um, and the other is a way of training, getting people fitter and healthier. So although you can use that as an aspiration, so if you maybe if you're a young athlete or you just sort of maybe want to know, okay, where, where is the peak of this? You can look at the CrossFit Games, you look at the CrossFit Sport, and those of you that are um, elite athletes, you maybe have a target of, of you know, ranking in the CrossFit Open or, or one of the, you know, high in the sport there, that's great. But for 90% of people, it's about getting fitter and healthier and, and achieving things you never thought possible. So when you see people doing handstand walks, muscle ups, uh, rope climbs, all of these things. If you came to a class, yes, you may even see on a class that there is programmed a rope climb or there is programmed a, a muscle up or a pull up or you know, something really advanced. But we've always got a scaling options. And the whole principle behind what we do here is that everyone that comes into the class, so we've got nine people in the class and we've got the, the fittest person here and a complete beginner here. You know, one guy's 21 year old guy, another guy's like you know, 65 year old guy, never trained before. They can do the same class, but we scale the movements to fit. That's why we have small classes, because it's very easy to manage and scale what we do. So, for example, people that were doing muscle-up, that would be the top progression. So, a muscle-up being a movement where you pull yourself up and over the rings or the bar and into a dip. So, it's like a full pull-up over into a dip. The scaling version of that, obviously, we can scale it down to a pull-up. We could scale that pull-up down to a pull-up where you're using a band for assistance. And we can even scale that down to a horizontal row where you've got the rings and you're rowing in like this. And you haven't even got to be horizontal, you could be at a, uh, at a slight angle. So if you've done TRX work there. So achieve, that's an achievable movement for anyone of any age can do a ring row, provided they haven't got any, any injuries that could stop them doing that. Um, the same for, let's say, a handstand walk. Could be something, is, uh, uh, scale it down to something like a bear crawl is another variation of that. So there's always an option to scale it. In terms of being fit enough, well, you don't have to complete every workout to the maximum, again, level. So yes, everyone is fit enough for CrossFit. And there's no reason physically why people, why people can't just come in and train um, straight away once they've gone through our foundations program and learned how to move properly, why they can't come and train because our coaches and myself will scale everything to fit those people. So their level not only of um, strength and mobility, but also their level of ability and other, their technical ability. So, they maybe don't want to do as complex a movement as the other guys. In terms of whether you are mentally ready, that's a different thing. Because some people just need to build some confidence in what they can do before they come and join a class. And that's just a personal thing. Some people can come in from no level of fitness and come and train and be absolutely fine. And other people, they just need to build up that, um, that mental side. So by doing some personal training, they're going to get themselves into a position where they're moving more proficiently, they're feeling a bit more confident about themselves, about their movements, about their body, and then they can come to class. But it, in terms of if you came in as a complete beginner, everyone would welcome you with open arms. We'd get the workout scale for you and you'd be absolutely fine. But it's, again, some people need, to need that extra level of training and prefer to come in at a sort of higher level, but you don't have to. You can come in at whatever level you like and you're going to get huge amounts of benefits. And actually, the lower level you start at, the bigger those benefits are going to be because you're going to have that massive boost initially in your training when you first start. So everyone is fit enough for CrossFit. I don't care who you are. There's no excuse. 
um, for you not to come and try it out. That's question number one. Question number two is, and mainly from girls, and I've answered a little bit before, but I'll talk about it again. Won't lifting weights, doing CrossFit, make me bulky? Now, I've learned a little bit since the last video of maybe how to answer this question with another question to the, to the person who asked me it and answer it a bit better is that when someone asks me that, I want, I want to know what they want to look like. So I sort of say, well, what, what do you want to look like? like? Who do you want to look like? You know, what, what physique do you admire? And, you know, they'll, start, they'll, they'll, they'll maybe talk about the physique they want or what they're looking to do. And the answer to all of that is, well, if you want to be toned, okay, which everyone talks about, I want to be toned, I want to shape up, you need to build muscle. I don't care who you are or what you do. If you want to be toned and you want to be shapely and not saggy, you need to build muscle muscle. As a girl, you don't have enough testosterone to get big and bulky without a huge amount of effort with the sole intent of getting that way. And that's kind of where um, you need to clarify is that the only way people get bulky, well, there's a couple of ways, actually. Um, the only way, you can, there's a few ways you're going to get bulky doing CrossFit as a girl, because obviously you don't have the testosterone uh, levels of guys. So some, obviously some girls have genetic variances, so there will be some people that are more predisposed, but generally they'll already show those signs, so they'll already be sort of quite sort of big and strong, and that will just be um, aided on, on its way by, by our training. But, there's only a few, that would be, I'd say, a very small minority of girls that have that trait already. Um, for most people, for 99.9% .9 of people that come, you don't have that uh, genetic predisposition. So the only way you're going to get bulky, um, and, and, and I'm talking like, you know, like people, they like they imagine, when they watch the people in the CrossFit Games, okay, they see that, is by either taking a crap load of steroids and training hard or training bloody hard and being super, 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 super lean because that's the only thing to worry that you sort of, um, you see that. and when you see people in the CrossFit Games, what you've got to remember as well is that they are also mega pumped, okay, they've done a massive workout, so all their muscles are pumped and they're really vascular because the blood's flushing through their muscles, so I mean, any of you that have done a workout, and the problem is that people that ask these questions haven't done a proper workout before in their life, so... They've never had that feeling of sort of the, the, the pump that you get immediately after workout where everything swole, as the hashtag is nowadays. So they kind of don't understand that that's when they're seeing these people in, in, the, in the heat of competition, that's not what they look like necessarily every single day. And also these guys, you know, in the competition, they're, they're prepped and they've been training up to that point, so they're at their absolute physical peak. But if you want to be toned, if you want to build shape and tone, lift, you know, your bottom, stop everything sagging, you need muscle, you've got to basically, what's your body made of? You've got internal organs, okay, well they're not going to give you the shape and tone, okay, unless you want your body to look like the shape of your kidneys. Um, you've got skeleton, and trust me, the skeleton does not have great shape and tone, so we don't want the skeleton, look. and then we've got fat, all right? So if you've got zero muscle or very low muscle, and you've just got bones, oh you've got skin as well of course, um, bones, fat and skin, it's basically like you've just poured a jellyfish over a skeleton and that's kind of what you're going to end up looking like, you're going to be saggy and loose and it's not a good look. So you have to have muscle tone, you have to have muscle tone and you have to build muscle um, when you're training to get the tone you want and if you are training three, four times a week for one hour a session, as a girl, you're not going to get massive, all right? You're not going to get massive. You have to be putting in some serious hours to get the way um, the girls that you may be seeing across the game. I mean, they're training five hours a day, six hours a day. Um, so obviously, they're going to build as much muscle as they can possibly get. And that is the absolute extreme. We have, you know, members of coaches here that train five, six days a week, you know, one and a half hours or so a day. 
and they've got great tone, great shape, but they're not bulky in any way. Um, and I think there's, a, there's always that fear. So weights will not make you bulky, weights will make you toned. Just doing cardio will make you skinny fat. And what do I mean by skinny fat? I mean you're going to lose body weight, but you're going to have no tone, so you're just going to be skinny and loose. And that might be a great look, that might be what you want to look for, that's absolutely fine, but if you're looking for tone, you generally want to be toned, then you need to be doing weight. So don't, don't think, oh, come here and make bulky, it's not going to happen, especially for most people that ask that question, their intent is to maybe train twice or three times a week, so it's nigh on impossible for that to happen. And, and, I, and, I, and the only way you're going to be bulky if you're training that, oh, that, freak, that, that infrequently um, is the bulk's going to come from you being fat on top of that. Yeah, so fat on top of that muscle is going to make you bulkier. So if you lose that fat, you're going to be toned. So you've got to make sure that you know what you're talking about when you're asking these questions or you know that the answer you're going to get is going to be me telling you that no, it's not going to happen. Um, for guys, obviously, there's testosterone in there as well. If you're a young guy, you've got more testosterone. If you're really young, you've got um, HGH, home, you've got human growth hormone still in your system. So you will get <laughs> bigger doing that. But again, if you want to get um, really big and bulky and that kind of stuff, then you need to do more bodybuilding style training. Um, so guys, if you want to get that way, then you can train specifically to help that out. So you would do, on top of your crossfit, you do your accessory work as well to get big and bulky. And if you just want to be bodybuilding, then crossfit is not the answer. Go and do some bodybuilding. If, you, if that's all you want to look is just get bigger and bulkier, then then maybe you need to look at something else in terms of your training to get that look because it's not um, the optimum way to get big and bulky. It's not CrossFit, I've got to tell you the honest. Um, it's just doing bodybuilding training and that's kind of one of the most boring things you could possibly do. So, but if you enjoy that, great. Uh, next, last question. How much weight should I expect to lose? That is a great question. And it's one that I, I, I often answer, depending on what mood, what mood I'm in, I will maybe say, None. And then sometimes I'll say, well, it depends. And it does depend, and it also, uh, it does depend massively on a couple of things. How often you're going to train? How's your diet? So, and if you are training, what is your current body fat percentages at the moment? Because what happens when you train, especially when you actually train, um, when you first start training, you're going to get, well, you're going to get muscle growth throughout the time, but you're going to get the, the best results when your body is adapting to this new stimulus that you've presented it. So you're going to get definitely muscle growth. And as you may or may not know, muscle is quite a bit denser than fat. So when you build muscle, that weight will come on to your body. It won't make you look um, fatter, but you will have muscle tone. And you have to take that into consideration when you're looking at weight loss, if you've got a new training regime, because you will gain muscle. You hopefully, if your diet is in place, because there's no diet in place, then you probably won't lose weight. Because what happens most of the time, if people put take on a new training regime, they eat more to compensate because they're t they're hungry from training. So it does massively come into nutrition. Nutrition is probably 60% of that. Um, but you're going to gain muscle, and you're going to lose um, fat weight. So you're going to gain muscle weight, lose fat weight. So there will be a transition where you will lose. You know, depending if your diet is right, you should lose some weight. But really, I like to look at people's body composition. Okay, so only really in, in people that are um, more overweight people will obviously see it more significant. Also, they've got higher, higher amounts of fat, sorry. So, so higher fat percentage people will see a greater degree in weight loss because they'll have more fat to lose. Um, but if you're in a sort of lower body fat percentage or, or medium body fat percentage, I should say, then that's going to be slightly slower. And with all training, I like the philosophy that the longer something takes to, um, to be attained, the harder that will be, or the, sl the longer that will take to go away again. So in other words, if you, lose, um, if you lose a stone over three years, you've lost it by making changes to your lifestyle. You've, you've implemented good practice over that period of time, and, it, and it's something that's stuck over a period of time to lose that weight. So therefore, it's going to be unlikely that that weight is going to go on quickly because you've made that adaptation and it's lasted you know, for two, three years. So therefore, that weight loss will stick with you because you've formed great habits over that time. Conversely, if you lose a stone in a month, you've probably gone on some extreme juice fast diet or um, intermittent fasting or something 
that's incredibly extreme, that's unsustainable over a long period of time, and, of, and that weight loss probably isn't fat loss. It's probably um, loss through glycogen stores and maybe water loss as well. So that weight. And you haven't formed good habits, so what's going to happen is as soon as you stop this crazy diet, uh, you're going to put the weight back on. And I've talked about moderation, is it worse? Um, I think there's a, a counter-argument to what I had said before, because I think, yes, we need to see results in our training. So if you're not seeing results, it's quite difficult to stick to anything. But the optimum, the optimum, I'm talking, once you've got that initial boost of maybe losing that first bit of weight from doing something like um, intermittent fasting, then you need to find a solution that's going to, you're going to stick with long term, because you need to have something, and I talk about having an exit strategy for a diet, is you need to have something that's going to sustain you over that period of time, because that weight loss that you get, if you're only doing it on, by doing you know, a change of your diet, keto, or anything like that, if you've got no exit strategy, and if you don't have a long-term plan of, of, sort of getting more weight loss over time, then yeah, you'll put that weight back on. So will you lose weight during CrossFit? Possibly, if that's your goal, and if, if you're going to put in the nutrition side of things, then, then you will. Um, if you just do CrossFit and you expect the weight to fall off, it's probably unlikely. And that's the same with, I'm not saying it's a CrossFit thing, it's the same with anything you do activity-wise, exercise-wise, is that if you just implement the activity and you don't make changes to your lifestyle, unless you are um, more overweight, I suppose, if you're higher quantities of fat, then you have an initial bit where your body is adapting to new stimulus, so you will lose weight initially but quite soon that will plateau out and that weight loss will stop because your body will adapt to that and probably your calories will change to compensate for the increase in activity. So um, CrossFit won't make you lose weight, but CrossFit alongside a healthy lifestyle will make you lose weight. And that's important because I think, um, I think it does help to lose weight because I think what, once you have one healthy habit in your life, so with my PT clients, I'll often not talk about food initially, I'll just say, let's get you training first of all. Let's get you doing a regular, consistent training, and we want to get that consistency in. So if you're training consistently, that's one habit you can form. Once that habit's formed, we can start talking about hydration, and we talked about this in my video uh, previously about the best ways to get you fitter, and then we can layer it on one step at a time. But at some point, you do have to hit that nutrition side because that is the biggest point, and not just for weight loss, but also for performance, because you need the right mix of macros to get the most out of your performance, to get the most out of your energy levels, not just in your training, but in life as well. If you want everything to sort of be performing at uh, an optimum, then we need to look at that as well. So hopefully, I've rambled a bit there, but hopefully that answers uh, the three questions that get asked most frequently in my cross 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 CrossFit consultation. Um, and uh, if you have any questions that you'd like me to answer in one of these videos, um, which I'm going to make into a podcast, guys, for you soon, because I know that a lot of these are just me chatting, and I think it'd be easier if you listen to this when you're out on a walk or in your car. So check it out. I'll be, I'll be uploading these to podcasts soon. So I hope you enjoy that. But if you've got any questions, please put them in the comments uh, below. Or if you see it on Facebook, put it down there. Or drop me an email, at, uh, jeremy at crossfitchilton.com. And I'll be happy to answer them. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching guys, please subscribe to the YouTube channel and check me out on Facebook.